guys, it's John. Are you ready for the next episode? Clippers, of... do you know? So what we're going to be doing here, guys, is I want to kind of show you an alternative cooking, an alternative uh, water purification. Well, I may be using the word incorrectly. Being able to boil water, okay, <laughs> so that you can make it drinkable. Uh, get some of the nasties out of it and uh, what I want to do on this build very specifically is because there's a lot of people out there that you know they don't make any bad comment but some of their comments I'm starting to delve into a little more you know personally just me not with them but I'm listening to some of the stuff they're saying they're like wow you know wish I could weld like that that'd be really cool or you know wow it's amazing I never knew I needed a left-handed monkey wrench for you know the ability to do that so I'm kind of trying to take that listen to it and go okay we need to do a build that any prepper could not do all right anybody I mean quite literally if you can use a pair of pliers and have a pair of pliers a razor knife all right, very much similar to like this. Most everybody's got one of these, or even your EDC knife, okay? And for those of you listening that are going, well, I've never heard of that phrase before, it's just your everyday carry knife as well. But uh, your pocket knife, all right? If you can use that, if you can use this, a pair of simple pliers, a little tiny miniature, you know, piece of plastic to squeeze you with, all right, and you can use a spray paint can and peel tape. If you can do that, I'm going to teach you how to do this, okay? It's this simple. First things you're going to need, number one, find a satellite dish. Now, you might think, oh, yeah, great, dude, I don't have satellite. No, they're all over the place. Everybody's got a buddy that, you know, went, hey, you know what, I'm sick of Dish Network or I'm sick of Direct TV. One of them they're sick of. I can't believe what they did. Ah, the heck with them. And they shut it all off. They don't want that dish back. All right. That's why they don't take it off your roof. They have no intention of getting off the roof. They just want the equipment back and you can keep the dish. That's what you need. You need one of those. Now, disclaimer and tip. When you remove this from your friend's place, or you know, make, if you're doing it with your friend's place, make sure your friend knows. If you're going to do it from yours, when you remove the foot, okay, from the shingles, don't take those screws with you. Get yourself some of the tar and put those screws right back in there, guys. Because then you don't have to worry about leaking and all that. So when you take those screws out and head down the ladder and off you go, well, now we got a problem there. So what I usually do is, is I'll dip the screws completely in wet, dry roofing cement. All right. I put them right back down in there and I make sure that I put a little washer, a little larger than a washer on there. I'll put them right down, put a blab right on top of it. You never even know. That's up to you. Now, obviously, don't take my word. Do your research. But uh, yeah. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, get started on this project. All, All right, right, guys. So once you got the satellite dish, you've gotten the dish portion apart. We're going to begin sanding this. Okay. I'm going to be stepping up different grits. I'm going to start out with a hundred grit. All right, because I don't want to put deep grooves in here. Whenever you put a groove in here, any slight groove, when you put your reflective surface on, it shows. Okay. So resist the urge. I know half of you are going to run and go, oh, I got an orbital sander. Slightest bit of pressure, wrong manner. Since you're in a parabola here, it's uh, the type of shape it is. You can, you're, you're going to have a flat surface spinning, all right, in an area that's not a flat surface. So you're going to wind up with little indentations. Every one of those indentations, every single one of them is going to show on your reflective surface, all right? Trust me. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds have come before us, and hundreds and hundreds have learned. <laughs> let's take the pothole that they marked on their map of uh, this project, and let's not step in it ourselves, okay? So it's just simply, guys, elbow grease. That's it. Under grit until you get all the gray off, all right? Just sit here and work it and work it and work it. Get yourself a cup of coffee. Maybe set your laptop up good, listen to some, listen to some music, 
whatever you got to do, resist the urge. Right? Okay, guys, for our reflective surface, as you can see the camera shining in here, we're going to be using the Quicksilver Rocker Kit. It's a chrome peel and stick. You get quite a good amount. All right. In case you need a model number or something like that, 6x16. Six Got it at VIP. Has a spreader on the bottom to help ensure that you get a nice wrinkle-free area. There's your information on it. Alright, this is what we're going to be using today for the project here. We've now totally got the satellite dish all cleaned up. Guys, just be sure you peel it all the way off, okay? Because it is a pain in the butt to try to peel off when you get this all, the adhesive uh, cover off of there. Now, we're going to cut this in half, okay? So I'm going to roll it back up, okay? And I'm going to cut it right in half so it's a three-inch strip. It's a lot easier to put down in a three-inch strip. All right, so I've rolled it up. And I'm just cutting it, okay? Just going to cut it so we have two three-inch strips, and then I'll show you how we put it on. All right, I'm starting to see a difference here. This is our bib of smooth sanded area, and I'm beginning to see a little reflective surface. So we'll go ahead and put the next one on. And I shall show you how that works. And this build shouldn't, the longest part of this build, the absolute most difficult part, should be the sanding. Okay? That's going to be your longest part. Alright, so what I do is I peel a little bit, make sure I know where my ends are going to fall, and we're going to overlap, guys, okay? We're going to overlap by about a quarter of an inch. Alright, so I'm just rubbing that in now. Okay, let's get that where you can see what I'm doing here. Okay. Alright. Let me grab my little squeegee here. Where'd it go? There it is. Alright. This is what I meant by you're going to get a bubble or two in there. Do not freak yourself out. Don't go nuts. This is supposed to be something to learn with, something to train with. Alright. The beauty of this stuff is it's pretty resilient. I've peeled it up three, four, five times. It's pretty good stuff. Now the next thing you'll think of, oh, what if it gets wet? This is designed for auto. Alright, it's not supposed to be a stranger to getting wet. And having a pretty good smooth surface is going to give us a lot less bubbles. Okay, we've got a few. We'll attempt a little bit to work them out, and if they want to come out, they will. If they don't, well, they won't. But we haven't got a surface that's the least bit embarrassing here, okay? I don't think this surface is in the least bit embarrassing. All right. All right, guys. I've got it all on there, and now I'm going to use my razor knife. I'm going to just drag it right along the edge using the edge as my template.
confuse the edges or template. Get that off to the side. And there we have it. All right, now these, you see right here, these are our mounting bolts. This is where they're going to go through at. Yes, you can see the seams where the tape is. I'm not worried about that. What I'm worried about is being able to have that kind of a reflection aimed at the sun. All right, guys, to go over it, quite literally, these are the tools that we used. A pair of scissors. We used a razor knife. I have a little Allen wrench, all right, mine just comes on a T-handle, all right. I used an adjustable wrench, and I used a simple little uh, open-end box wrench. So now we're going to set these off down here, and the squeegee that came with the stuff, and we're going to put her back together. We've spray-painted the entire stand, and so you see... The arm here that usually holds the LNB, all we did was disconnect these three bolts and we inverted it, okay? So that this will be at the top. So our pot will hang on an end right here, okay? All right, you see what I got here? Okay, now. Without further ado, let's see if we can get this thing to do what we would like it to do. I think you see the flames, right? I see the flames. I think you do too. Do I have your attention now? This build is easy to do simple to do, and it produces this much heat. The grand total for this build, the total, because I got this stuff here, all right, it's 20 bucks. 20 bucks. This satellite dish was free. I already had a can. Whatever can of paint you have laying around is the color I want you to paint that. I don't care. Don't get an expense going. But this, guys, has the ability do some pretty amazing stuff. Got a lot of wind, so it's stopping the flame from going, but I think I have your attention, right? That's nothing more than aluminum tape on a satellite dish. Right? It's the shape, the shape that does it, okay? And that's what does it. So hopefully, this one here, I want you all to go out and do. J0-0, this is one that you can do real simple, brother. And I know that uh, this is something you will dig and you'll have some fun with. All right? But guys, this is small. It's compact. This is just a smart idea to have. I'm not saying jam it in a bug out bag. No, I'm not. But I'm saying when the power goes out, guess what hangs from up here? My little pot. I'm able to make soup. I'm able to, uh, you know, purify some water. This is a smart idea. Give it a try. You owe it to yourself to just try, all right? Have a good one, guys.